Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli back out here in the shop. We have a great topic for you today. In today's shop, we're going to be talking about the lipless crankbait, aka rattle trap. Specifically, we're going to talk about fishing this thing when the water's cold or when the water's cold and warming. So winter time, pre-spawn, water temperatures anywhere from the upper 30s to about the mid 50s, that thing right there is a killer. Uh, before I start, let me remind you that everything you hear in this video is going to be right down there in the links. So check that out. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe right now. All right, let's get to this. The lipless crankbait, aka rattle trap. Uh, you all know this bait. And when you look at it, it's called a lipless bait because it's like a crankbait, right? It's a hard body bait. Uh, most of these are ABS plastic, a few are balsa, but when you look at it, looks like a crankbait, minus one thing, and that is no lip. So that's where that lipless name comes from. The misconception about this style bait is that it's only good in the spring. I can't tell you how many people I talk to or I've heard say, yeah, that, that rattle trap, that lipless, it's great in the spring. It's great right before they get on beds and then they forget about it. Let's, let's tell you this right off the giddy. This is a bait that works four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter, but especially when that water's cold, cool water in that winter to pre-spawn, this is in my top five of best baits you can throw, okay? So really versatile bait. The other great thing about the lipless, and remember it's called a lipless crankbait. Like a crankbait, it elicits two kinds of strikes from bass. You know, bass that are hungry, 100% will attack this. Feeding fish will attack this. Um, it's got sound. It's got vibration. Guys, look at the profile. Look at the silhouette of it. Does, does it get any more bait fish or shad oriented than that? It does not, right? So feeding fish will strike it. But the great thing about a lipless, especially in that cold water that we're talking about, winter pre-spawn, is that you can generate a reaction strike with this bait as well, okay? So feeding fish, yes. Non-feeding fish, yes. You're gonna make them bite it. So um, we're gonna start getting into this bait and I wanna go over the three different size baits I use. We're gonna talk a little bit about color, real simple color selection. Then we're gonna go into some modifications and when we're all done that, we're going to talk about the most important thing when fishing this bait in cold water. And that is the rod, the reel, the line, the line selection, and the retrieve. All right, let's get to the traps. Um, you know, when it comes to these style baits, I like to carry three different sizes. Uh, easy way to explain it, I like to carry small, medium, and large. And the main difference for me when I pick each one of those is water depth and forage size. I'm very, very conscious of how big the forage is in that fishery. And I'm really conscious of mimicking that forage size, right? So big forage, a big bait, smaller forage, a smaller bait. But I really do like those three sizes. Um, this is the Rapala Rip and Wrap. Uh, and the Rip and Wrap has some unique sizes to it. Their big one is a 7 8 In a lot of different vibrate lipless vibrations, it's a 3 quarter. The middle Rip and Wrap that I use, that middle size, and this gets the most work, is a half ounce. That's a pretty standard size. And then the last, the small size of the Rapala that I like, which is 2 inches, right? That's pretty small, is... Five sixteenths, right? So a little less than three eighths. 
And 3 8 is another common size you'll see in the smaller uh, lipless traps out there. Um, so three sizes, again, pick the size that mimics the forage, but also think about water depth. The deeper the water, the heavier the bait, right? This big one that's almost three quarters of an ounce does a lot better job of getting down. Half ounce, most versatile, the three. The five sixteenths or the three eighths, pretty darn good in ultra shallow water, okay? So mimicking forage, a water depth, Small, medium, and large. I always like to carry those three sizes of traps. All right, now to the element of color. And I want you to really dumb down the color selection when it comes to these things. And I'm just trying to imitate three different things when I'm picking lipless. The first one is I want colors that mimic bluegill, uh, perch, you know, species that are brighter species like that, right? And I want those chartreuses, the greens, right? The things that imitate the, the panfish species. So a bright color, you want a shad color, chromes, pearls, chrome olive, chrome blue. That's gonna be a mimic of your bait fish and shad. And last but not least, you can't go wrong with crawfish colored lipless vibrations. Your browns, your reds, especially in that pre-spawn, cold water pre-spawn period. I really believe a lot of those crawfish are coming out of that, that winter mode and they have orange green tones. That orange red, orange green, that, that Rayburn red color, demon color is a killer, okay? So on color selection, guys, dumb it down. Keep it simple, okay? All right, now on the hook modifications. And this is one of the biggest tricks that I do to my lipless vibrations, my traps, to get more fish in the boat. And my number one modification that I'm gonna show you on these baits is replacing the belly hook with a larger hook, okay? And my rule of thumb on these baits is to go one or one and a half sizes bigger, okay? So just to give you a little example right here, this is, uh, this is the Rapala Rip and Wrap. This is the uh, 7 8 size, almost 3 quarter ounce. And if you look on the belly, we've got a number 4 on that belly. I always want to put a 1 to 1 and a half size bigger on that belly. So I'm just going to get rid of that 4. I'll just show you real quick. I'll spin it. I'm going to go to a size 3. I'm going to go one size bigger on this one and I'm going to replace that belly hook with the three. All right, two things that work there. The one is that belly hook is always protected. Look at the face of these lipless baits and they all look the same, right? Uh, the rip and wrap, the rattle trap, the red eyed shad, the, the booyah one knocker, whatever, the yozori. They all have this broad, flat front. And that's what's gonna give that bait that vibration. And when you look at the connection point, as you reel these baits, they come in head down, right? That head's down. So that flat front of that bait is actually protecting that belly hook, okay? So you can get away with a bigger hook. Bigger hook on the belly means more fish on the boat. So first modification, always putting one size bigger on the belly. The back hook, you know, really, I like to play the conditions. If it's heavy cover, uh, a lot of grass, a lot of cover, uh, you know, moderate amount, I leave that factory hook on there. If it's totally open water, a lot of times I'll replace that back hook with one size bigger, if you're in open water. So play the cover with that back hook. But Number one modification, bigger hook on the belly. Number two modification when I'm fishing this thing, cold water to the pre-spawn, is fishing ultra heavy cover where nobody fishes a lipless. And I get the question a lot, how the heck can you do that? And I'm talking about lily pad fields, the thickest milfoil and hydrilla you'll ever see in your life. Even in brush, I've done this technique in brush lanes around 
thick brush piles, past laydowns. How the heck are you fishing that through laydowns? And here's this great modification that I've learned. Remember what I said about when you retrieve it, right? That flat side cocks the head down. The water pressure brings that back hook up. So that hook's protected. Here's your problem. And by replacing that belly hook with a bigger one, the modification I'll make in ultra heavy cover, it's right there. Removing the back hook. About 20% of the time when I'm fishing that ultra heavy cover, I fish it with just the belly hook and it allows me to get it through the cover and I still have a great hookup percentage. All right, my next hook modification, and this one is for uh, the anglers, especially if you're in clear water situations. A lot of times in the cold water period, whether it's winter or pre-spawn, so you know, February, March, in April, some places, clean water, right? You haven't had a lot of rain yet. The water's ultra clear. This is one of the coolest little mods that I've seen and it is called a bladed hybrid treble by VMC. I'm gonna get one out and show it to you. It's basically, it's a treble hook with just a small little blade on it. And it's a perfect add-on to a lipless when you need more flash. And a lot of times that is in clear water situations. So um, I'll just thread that on the back. Does not affect the action of the bait whatsoever, but in clear water, I'm definitely gonna generate a few more bites by having a little flash on the rear. So clean water, cold clean water, add some flash. But my next hook modification, my last hook modification, comes in dirty water. And this one is adding a feathered treble in dirty water. And so in clear water, I want that flash, but in dirty water, I want that buoyancy and bulk of some kind of hackle on the back. Uh, duck feathers, chicken feathers, uh, uh, synthetic, mylar, whatever it is. That, that tail gives it bulk, gives it more presence in the water, and in dirty water, that little add-on will 100% get you more bites, okay? So three really cool hook modifications with that bait. All right, let's get to line then we're gonna talk about rod and reel and then we'll get to the nitty gritty. On line with a lipless vibration, I love to fish one of two style lines. And I'm either gonna fish that lipless on 100% straight fluorocarbon, from the knot to the spool, all fluorocarbon, or I'm gonna fish that lipless on monofilament, on mono, copolymer line. And there's a reason for both. And I, I'm really going to flush this out with you. When I want to keep this bait, let's look at this one here. I've got a, got a half ounce tied on here. When I'm fishing this bait and I want to keep it higher in the water column, if I'm in shallow water, if I'm over a grass, if I'm, uh, you know, fishing suspended fish that are high up and I want to keep this bait higher I want to fish mono mono's buoyant mono floats and that's going to keep this bait higher in the water column so mono when you want to keep a lipless higher but the opposite is true with fluorocarbon and I want fluorocarbon when I want to get this bait deeper so deeper water fish that are relating more to the bottom, uh, you know, cover that is right connected to the bottom, newly growing grass. When I want to get the bait deeper, I'm going to go to fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon sinks. It's dense. So it's going to help that bait get down. Okay. So mono or fluorocarbon. All right. Now I know what you're saying. Why not braid? Why not braid? Uh, I'm going to give you a quick explanation now. 
as I talk about the rod and the reel real quick, I'm really going to get into it. But when I'm fishing a lipless bait, especially in the cold water period, I want stretch. I want stretch. I do not, do not want zero stretch. And the reason I want stretch is I want that fish to get that bait. You know, you're reeling it. You feel something. You feel the bite, the tick. You see your line jump. Your instinct is to pull back. When you pull back, a lot of times you're pulling that away from the fish. But now when you pull back, those lines give a little. And it acts as a little, um, you know, a little delay in the process. And that fish 100% gets the bait better. The other thing that's great about mono or fluoro, you don't lose them as much once you have them hooked. You know, that fish is fighting next to the boat and he's jumping. That line has a little bit of stretch to it and it's gonna give as that fish pulls or surges, okay? So mono or fluoro, mono when you wanna keep the bait high, fluoro when you wanna keep the bait low. And rod and reel, let's get to the rod first, which is the opposite of what a lot of you guys assume is the right rod for lipless. Now remember, these baits have treble hooks. They are treble hook lures like crankbaits, right? They're called lipless crankbaits. So you want the same rod that you're throwing your crankbaits with. And that is a cranking style rod, right? When I'm throwing a lipless, I don't want a heavy action rod. I hear so many guys saying, well, I gotta rip it out of grass. I need a heavy action rod. No, it's treble hook lure. I want it to have spongy tip, a, 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 a flimsy, you know, um, parabolic tip bend to it. And once again, that tip's gonna help me make long casts. It's gonna help that fish get the bait before I set the hook. When that fish is fighting, it's gonna give to the fish. But here's one of the main things it's gonna do. And I'm gonna try to explain this to you the right way is that when I'm fishing it around cover and I snatch it or rip it from cover, um, grass is a great scenario of this, especially in the cold water. Rem living, remaining grass or newly emergent grass, you know, hydrilla milfoil, it's just starting to grow, pad stems that are just shooting out. When that thing's coming through and it gets snagged, if I had a stiff rod on braid, when that lipless gets hung in that milfoil or hydrilla and I snatch it out, it snatches it forward because there's no stretch, right? Stiff rod, braid, when you pull, it pulls forward. But if I'm fishing with a flimsy rod, a crankbait rod, parabolic, with, break, with a floor or mono, has a little stretch, and I'm hung up in that grass and I snap it out, it snaps up and out, like a rubber band, right? Think about when you snap a rubber band, you pull it back and you let it go, pink, and it has a little bit of that to it, right? A little bit of elastic bounce to it. That parabolic rod mixed with the fluorocarbon and mono gives it a bounce, a snap out of the cover. And instead of snapping through, it snaps out and forward. That's a key motion, okay? So the right rod is a parabolic rod. I like a seven to seven and a half foot medium action rod. Abu Garcia um, Ike Series is a great one in the delay rod. Uh, you know it's a delay rod by the green dots. And then on real, 90% of the time in the cold water period, I'm forcing myself to slow down. And, and a great way to force yourself to slow down, right? Because it's a rattle trap. You have a tendency to throw it out and just burn it back. A great way to force yourself to slow down is to lower your gear ratio on your casting reel. And so cold water period lipless baits, six, six to one, six, eight to one, seven to one, it's a great range. 
I don't want the eight to ones. I don't want the nine to ones, the 10 to ones. I don't want that. And I also don't want the ultra slow. Five to ones, the five to fours, those reels for the crankbaits that are that big, you don't want those either. So a slow, moderate slow to medium retrieve reel, six, six to seven to one, perfect retrieves for that lipless. All right, last but not least, talking about these lipless baits in the cold water period, winter or pre-spawn, I'm gonna show you my, uh, my number one retrieve, and um, I got two little ways I'm gonna do it, depending on the cover. And it's basically called the yo-yo retrieve. And uh, it, it's, it's probably the best way you can fish a trap when that water is colder. Uh, you know, when the water's hot, you can burn it. You can do a lot of things with it. You could, you know, fish it like a jerk bait. You can do a lot of, but when the water's cool, man, those fish are still lethargic. Even in the pre-spawn, they're sort of coming to life, but that water's still cooler. Water's still in the 40s, 50s, right? Even in the mid 50s, the yo-yo retrieve is the way I like to fish it. And basically, I'm making a long cast past where those fish are at. I'm letting that bait sink to the bottom. And once it hits the bottom, I'm just taking my rod and I'm going from three o'clock, I'm lifting the 12, and I'm following my slack back now. Boom. And it just, basically give you an idea, it shimmies down, hits the bottom, you lift, and then as it comes back down that semi-slack line, it wanders back down. Very amazing action uh, that looks just like an injured bait fish or just like a crawfish scooting away backwards, right? That yo-yo, that lift and fall, right? So long cast, Make that super long cast out there. Pass where those fish live. Take it from about three o'clock and lift. And after you lift, follow your slack back down. So, follow your slack back down. And I'm gonna do that all the way till I'm past where I believe the fish are living, right? That yo-yo retrieve. Lift and fall. A lot of those bites you're gonna get are gonna come as you lift it off the bottom or as it's aimlessly falling back. And again, because it looks like a easy meal to those fish. And hungry fish, non-hungry fish, they gotta have it. The second way I'm gonna fish it is that same yo-yo, but when I'm around cover, I'm gonna make that upward motion from three to 12. Instead of that nice little steady, when there's cover, I'm gonna give it a little wrist snap. And we just talked about it, especially in grass. When that lure's stuck or hung on something and you snatch it, it's got a little more violent uplift, that's a great way to make those non-biting fish react, right? So a reaction strike. So everything's the same. The cast out there past where you believe the fish are at, let it sink to the bottom. But this time we're gonna go from three to 12, but instead of just a nice gentle lift. We're gonna just give it a little, we're just gonna give it a little snap of our wrist, right? We're gonna give it a little, a little upward snap. And the general rule is the thicker that cover, the thicker that grass, the harder that snap. Sometimes in really thick grass, you could even use your hand and just help snap that rod on the lift. Just give it a little extra little snap and that'll pop it out of that grass, it'll pop it out of that sticks or brush, and a lot of those non-responsive fish, as it snatches out of there, boom, they're gonna eat it. Um, man, of all the baits you can fish in the cold water period, this is one of my favorites. Um, lipless bait for fish that are feeding, lipless bait for fish that are non-feeding, great for reaction strike, Try some of these tips with the line, with the hooks, with the rod, with that retrieve. I guarantee you're gonna catch more fish when it's cold, even into the pre-spawn. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, talking lipless crankbaits uh, out here in the shop. If you like what you're hearing, do me a favor, stop right now, hit that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, do me a favor, tell your friends about Mike Iconel Fishing on YouTube. 
We are here to help you become a better fisherman. Uh, I've got a new video coming every single week. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to go out and see if I can catch one real quick. So, bye.